in this edition of RPP News. A dangerous water rescue. Third time unlucky for a Frankston councillor. And the celebration of a local legend. Hello, I'm Katie Sharp. Welcome to the latest edition of RPP News, bringing you stories from across Frankston and the Mornington Peninsula. The Water Police Squad faced perilous conditions this week to rescue three men in distress. At around 10.15pm on Tuesday night, police were called after a 10 metre yacht was caught in big swells and strong winds and began taking on water around 0.75 nautical miles off St Andrews Surf Beach. The skipper was unable to steer the yacht and it was blown out into Bass Strait, carrying with it its three occupants in their 60s and 70s. Due to the rough conditions, the police air wing was unable to winch the trio and the disabled yacht was involved in a collision with a carrier ship just after 1.30am. A commercial bulk carrier ship was tasked to provide cover until water police units made it to the scene. Water police pulled the men to safety just before 3am. Luckily no one was injured and there was no reported damage to the vessels. It looks like a Frankston City Councillor could be at risk of a third suspension. The council moved an urgent matter of business this week to send suspended councillor Stephen Hughes back to an arbitration panel. Councillor Hughes was due in chambers this week after serving a second suspension, but according to council he has not complied with the conditions set out by the arbiter, namely that he apologised to staff. On Monday, councillor Chris Bolam detailed further concerns about councillor Hughes, including his alleged misuse of social media. But the fact he was suspended the first time and now we have a second suspension. Uh, it, should, it should be a clarion call, a warning bell. And uh, the first arbitration was headed by a former, um, uh, I believe he was a Supreme Court or a High Court judge, so he knows his stuff. Uh, the second arbiter, I, I believe he was a very well esteemed uh, lawyer. So these aren't people that we just pluck out of a serial container and, 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 and use for these processes. These are people who are impartial who come from very good backgrounds and the fact he has been suspended for a second time should be concerning. Now, the fact that more posts have been identified and there has been a refusal of an apology uh, to staff uh, for essentially maligning them, um, I think, uh, yeah, it's something we should take very seriously and councillors should actually be calling out this kind of um, misbehaviour. The Herald Sun reported the cost to taxpayers of arbitration and conduct panel matters involving Councillor Hughes has reached almost $38,000, not including the arbitration that took place in January. Opposition is reportedly growing to development proposals being canvassed for Frankston and protesters made their presence felt at last weekend's Waterfront Festival. A large red blimp was sighted over the festival on both days with the words Stop the Great Wall of Frankston printed on the side. A petition with the same name has attracted over 1,700 signatures. The petition is opposed to the number of high-rise developments slated for Frankston's beachside strip. It claims councillors have voted in favour of a 14-storey high-rise at the waterfront between Cannonock Creek and the Nepean Highway. The campaign is supported by a number of local community conservation and residence organisations. In Portsea, a World Athletics Heritage plaque in honour of the coaching career of Percy Serity was unveiled by his most famous pupil last Sunday. 1960 Olympic 1500 metre champion and multiple world record breaker of the 1500 metre and mile, in the 1950s, Serity and his wife Nancy made their permanent home and set up his famous training camp in Portsea. Serity's methods and theories revolutionised the way athletics was coached worldwide. Lord Coe, a two-time Olympic 1500 metre champion, told guests that it was Serity's famous protégé, Herb Elliott, who inspired him to become a runner. The World Athletics Heritage Plaque is awarded for outstanding contribution to the worldwide history and development of athletics disciplines. Frankston's premier summer celebration, the Waterfront Festival, was a spectacular success last weekend. An estimated 45,000 people attended the two-day event held in glorious sunshine. RPP broadcast live from the foreshore over both days, interviewing local bands and community organisations. And next weekend is a wealth of musical joy at the Frankston Arts Centre. Diesel is launching his Greatest Hits Alone with Blues Tour at the Centre on Thursday night. 
Then the world's number one ABBA show, Bjorn Again, takes over the stage for a weekend of glitzy 70s costumes, swanglish banter and hilarious antics. They'll be playing all of ABBA's biggest hits in a concert that is fun for the whole family. So dust off those flares and platform shoes and get ready to sing, dance and have the time of your life at the Frankston Arts Centre. Tickets are at the box office and on the FAC website. After the break, we have the coming week's weather report. Everyone knows Australia has four big banks, but the fifth biggest retail bank is snapping at their heels. It's a bank that's been around for over 160 years, can be found in over 500 locations nationwide, looks after over 1.8 million customers, and is regularly voted one of the most trusted brands out of all the thousands of brands in Australia. Who is this fantastic number five? Yep, it's Bendigo Bank. The better big bank. Hey, they're saying the fire danger rating's extreme. Should we go? There's no fire around here. can spread bushfires as far as 40 kilometres. So you should leave early. Authorised by the Victorian Government. Here at Bridgestone Select, it's our job to keep you moving with the right advice. A great range of products and service you can count on. So when it comes to tyres, when it comes to auto care, come to Bridgestone Select for service that moves you. Established in 1988, Progress Science has been servicing the local community for 30 years. Located on the Mornington Peninsula, they are the number one destination for all your signage needs. Specialising in a variety of signage from vehicles to shop fronts, occasional and corporate events, short term, long term and everything in between. If it's signs you need, be it large or small, Progress Signs is the place to call. Available 24-7 at progress-signs.com.au or call the team on 5975-9188. Thinking Science, Think Progress Science, a station sponsor. Welcome back. Let's now take a look at the coming week's weather. Sunday the 26th brought us a mostly overcast day with a high of 24 degrees and a low of 14. Monday sees these conditions continuing with a high of 23 and a low of 14 degrees. Tuesday sees a bit more of the sun with a high of 22 and a low of 14. Wednesday the 1st of March could bring some light rainfall across sections of the peninsula with a high of 21 and a low of 12. Thursday brings us a partly cloudy day with a high of 21 and a low of 10 degrees. Friday continues this trend with a high of 20 degrees and a low of 11. And finally, Saturday should see the sun poking its face through those clouds with a top of 21 degrees and a low of 12. And just a reminder, there is no surf report this week as our surfing guru, Muzz, is on a much required holiday. And that's all from our team here at RPP News, serving the community with stories that matter to you. Keep watching and do tell your friends. Bringing you the news from coast to coast across Frankston and the Mornington Peninsula, I'm Katie Sharp. See you for the next edition.